Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the Deathly Hallows, the Battle of Hogwarts, potion making, Horace Lughorn, and a little potion by the name of Felix Felicis, Liquid Luck. More specifically, I'm going to be addressing the question, why wasn't Liquid Luck used more? Why wasn't it utilized during the Battle of Hogwarts? If you've always wondered this as well, then sit back, relax, and enjoy. We first see Liquid Luck in the Half-Blood Prince after Dumbledore has convinced Professor Horace Slughorn to return to Hogwarts and teach potions. In this same school year, Harry paid extra close attention in his class, hoping to be selected by Slughorn in order to obtain information about Tom Riddle and Horcruxes. Part of this selection, however, involved Harry's use of a certain potions textbook one belonging to a half-blood prince. The textbook allowed Harry to breeze through Slughorn's potions lessons with ease, providing him with all sorts of shortcuts to a perfect brew. In one such lesson, Felix Felicis, or Liquid Luck, is introduced to us, a potion that, in essence, enables the consumer to become successful in all of their endeavors. Felix Felicis is, in my opinion, the most powerful potion of all because its possibilities are seemingly limitless. Whatever you try to use it for, you will be successful at, which means that with it, you should be able to achieve almost, well, anything. The potion was first created in the 16th century by a potioner by the name of Zygmunt Bridge, who dubbed it the crowning achievement of his career. Mine own invention, my masterpiece, the crowning achievement of my career, bottled good fortune, Brewed correctly, the drinker of this potion will be lucky in all their endeavors, but be warned, excessive consumption is highly toxic and can cause extreme recklessness. Fans of Quidditch were quick to protest that a potion which gives the drinker good luck was hardly fair, and use of my potion was banned, quite rightly, from all competitive events, except potion-making tournaments. And here Harry was, in Slughorn's class, with a vial of this potion right in front of him, a vial that looked like molten gold, with large drops leaping like goldfish from its surface, never spilling. The only thing that Harry needed to do to obtain this vial of liquid luck was be the first to successfully brew a draft of living death, which of course Harry did, thanks to Snape's textbook. Later in the same book, film, we finally see Harry use the vial that he won, a vial that would have given him about 12 hours of luck. Harry did not answer for a moment, then slowly, but surely, an exhilarating sense of infinite opportunity stole through him. He felt as though he could have done anything, anything at all, and getting the memory from Slughorn seemed suddenly not only possible, but positively easy. He got to his feet, smiling, brimming with confidence. Harry ended up taking a small dose, enough for two or three hours, but in this short time frame, he was able to achieve a lot, including, but not limited to, obtaining the uncorrupted memory from Horace Slughorn about Horcruxes, attending Aragog's funeral, keeping his word to Hagrid, convincing Slughorn to accompany him to Hagrid's, successfully casting a non-verbal refilling charm on Slughorn's drink, even though he had not mastered non-verbal spells, bumping into Ginny, leading to a compound of events that led to Ginny breaking up with Dean Thomas, inciting the breakup of Lavender Brown and Ron Weasley, and sneaking back into the castle undetected, evading even Peeves. In short, Harry achieved a lot, and this was just in two or three hours. Can you imagine what an army of witches and wizards would achieve, utilizing liquid luck for an extended period? The other side would stand no chance, right? So why wasn't it used? We know that liquid luck is hard to make. This is emphasized in the book and film, but we do know that it's possible to make. Slughorn made it himself. So why wasn't Slughorn tasked with creating liquid luck for the battle? Surely it would have helped with, well, everything contributing to the defeat of Lord Voldemort. It seems to be praised as a rare and powerful potion, but again, Slughorn can make it, and it can't be that priceless if he was willing to give it away to one of his students. Surely someone would have asked Slughorn to make it, right? Why not? First of all, money can't have been the issue, because both sides, 
good and evil, have wealthy wizards that could have easily contributed towards the production of the potion if it came down to a question of money. Second of all, it's not as if Felix Felicis is this secret potion that Slughorn doesn't want getting out into the world. It's well known in the wizarding community. It's even a banned substance in sports like Quidditch. Lastly, everyone knows that Slughorn can make it. He told his class, and he's probably been telling his classes for decades. To top all of this off, it doesn't seem like there's any reason why people wouldn't be able to take the potion on the day of the battle. I say this because when Slughorn was questioned on this by Terry Boot, he had this to say. Why don't people drink it all the time, sir? said Terry Boot eagerly. Because if taken in excess, it causes giddiness, recklessness, and dangerous overconfidence, said Slughorn. Too much of a good thing, you know. Highly toxic in large quantities, but taken sparingly and very occasionally. I can certainly think of a time when it could have been sparingly taken by a lot of people on only one occasion. So again, what's the deal? First of all, there's a pretty strong chance that the bad guys used Felix Felicis at some point or another as well. We know Harry uses it, and everyone seems to know that it exists. Slughorn even taught a lot of the Death Eaters, and even Tom Riddle himself. For them to not utilize such a potion would make absolutely no sense, so I'm willing to bet that, though it wasn't included in the books, films, the potion was used at some point or another, in order to achieve something. What exactly? Well, that could be a separate video. What I think it probably really comes down to is the brewing process. How feasible it is to make a lot, and how consistently you could make a successful, reliable batch. Sure, Felix Felicis isn't impossible to brew, and presumably most very gifted potioneers, at least Slughorn and probably Snape, are able to make it. But that doesn't mean that it's quick, or that it's 100% dependable. In Snape's copy of his textbook for advanced potion making, the one that Harry uses, he actually has notes about Felix Felicis. He takes note that the ingredients Felix Felicis is comprised of are particularly complex, and adds that it takes six months to brew. These two factors alone are great reasons for why it isn't used or produced in mass quantities, or produced often. War doesn't wait for potions to be brewed, and I would imagine that it would be a difficult and dangerous potion to stockpile in large quantities. Imagine if it came into the wrong hands. The ingredients required for a successful batch of Felix Felicis are Ashwinder eggs that come from a magical serpent named Ashwinda, which are purportedly very valuable when frozen, stored, squill bulbs which come from the squill flower, Mertlap tentacles that grow on the back of a Mertlap, a magical marine beast, these tentacles are said to be very rare, a tincture of thyme, a common muggle herb, an Occamy eggshell, which comes from the egg of an Occamy, a winged serpentine magical beast, and finally, pounded common rue, an evergreen shrub native to the Mediterranean. Most of these are not easy ingredients to come by, but suppose you do get a hold of all of them. You're in the clear, right? Wrong. In The Half-Blood Prince, Slughorn emphasizes the precarious and difficult nature of brewing such a potion. Desperately tricky to make and disastrous to get wrong. However, if brewed correctly, as this has been, you will find that all your endeavors tend to succeed, at least until the effects wear off. What he doesn't mention here, however, is how a witch or wizard would be able to tell if a batch has been brewed correctly or not. I think that the implication here is that being experienced isn't enough. It can still go awry. I think that it might be one of the situations where a witch or wizard wouldn't actually know until the potion has actually been taken, which would make using it a significant risk if it were to be doled out to the witches and wizards who fought valiantly in the Battle of Hogwarts. Slughorn himself once expressed that he has only taken the potion twice in his life. Have you ever taken it, sir? Twice in my life. Once when I was 24, once when I was 57. Two tablespoonfuls taken with breakfast. Two perfect days. Other reasons for why the potion might not have been used include, it might simply not be appropriate for a battle setting. 
The potion is cited to give the consumer what they need and not necessarily what they want. In a duel with a Death Eater, you might want to kill them, but in reality, all you really need is to survive. So the potion might only help with that. The fact that it only works from dawn to dusk. Wouldn't it be disastrous if it all wore off before the battle ended? People could easily develop an addiction, obsession with the potion. This is a potion that allows you to, for hours, achieve things that would have perhaps never been possible. I think that something like this could be particularly addictive and the kind of thing that people would do bad things just to acquire. What do you guys think? Did you ever wonder why this powerful potion was simply never used in the battle against Voldemort and the Death Eaters? Do you have a theory of your own? Comment down below. Until next time, remember, these are mad times we live in. Mad.